Hey everybody, welcome to our video series on making a custom ribbon in Microsoft Access. Oftentimes when we build an application for users, we want to keep them out of the design side of Access. One of the ways we can keep them out of the design side of the database is by building a custom ribbon that does not have any of those design side features on it. In addition to that, building a custom ribbon allows you to add that extra bit of polish that makes your application look that much more professional by providing the functionality in the ribbon that is particular to whatever application you build. Now, the way we build a custom ribbon is by creating an XML file that holds the attributes of the ribbon we're trying to create. In this video, all we're going to focus on is creating a ribbon and getting it to display. It's not going to do much. We're going to follow up with this video uh, with several other videos adding functionality to the ribbon we're building today. Now, the steps we're going to follow is we're going to build a table to hold our ribbon XML and there are some particulars about that that Microsoft gives to us. It has to have a particular name, uses ribbons, and it has to have at least these three columns in it. And we'll, just, we'll look at those in design mode in just a minute. Then we're going to use an XML editor to build our XML that describes the ribbon. And we're going to create two versions of it, one for ourselves and one for our users. Obviously the one for the users will have less things on it than ours will. We will build a form and bind it to our uses ribbons table that will make it easier for us to copy our XML into the table and then we will go to access options and choose which ribbon we want to display so let's head over to our database so the first thing we need to do is two setup items you need to come over here to our table list and on all access objects right click and click navigation options and ensure down here in the bottom that show system objects is checked if you don't have that checked you won't be able to see your use this ribbons table. Now unfortunately it shows us a bunch of other tables we don't really care about. The other thing we want to do is to get a little bit of help from Access on our XML syntax. So come over here to the file, go to options, click on client settings, scroll down to general and find show add-in user interface errors. Make sure that one is checked as well. And what this will do for us is if we have a syntax error in our ribbon XML, Access will give us a error message that might actually make sense to us. If that is not checked and you have an error in your XML, it will fail silently. Now you will notice because you won't get your custom ribbon, but there'll be no message. You won't have any idea what's wrong with it. So make sure that's checked and that will help you out quite a bit. I already have the useless ribbons table built, so we'll pull it up in design mode and have a look at it. It has three columns in it, an ID column, which must be an auto number, ribbon name, which is a text field, and then ribbon XML, which is a memo field. We need that to be a memo because the ribbon XML can get quite long. In addition to that, the ID field needs to be a primary key. All right, so we're going to close this table. Next, we want to build the XML that will describe our ribbon. I'm using Microsoft Visual Studio to edit XML. However, you could use any XML editor you want to use. Um, you, even for a while, I used Simple Notepad. Now, uh, you know, an advantage of an XML editor over Notepad is that an editor is going to give you, you know, contextual clues and uh, will help highlight uh, syntax errors in your XML, whereas Notepad won't do any of that. So this is the basic structure of the XML that describes a ribbon. Okay, you have an outer tag here, custom UI, and the closer tag there, a ribbon tag here, and the close tag here, and then you have the tabs tag. And the closing tabs here. Inside here we'll put tags describing which tabs we want on our ribbon. And the tabs of meaning being these items here. Okay? So we're going to build tabs. Within our tabs we're going to build groups to be clipboard, sort and filter records. And then within groups we'll build buttons and, and other controls as we see fit. I have added the attribute start from scratch equals false here. And what that tells Access is Whatever controls I have in this ribbon get added to the default ribbon that Access is going to display. If we set this to true, then Access will hide all the default ribbon tabs and will only display the tabs that we have here in our XML. So under tabs here, I'm going to add a new tab. Tab and ID equals. So every element within our ribbon has to have a unique ID. I'm going to call this one home, and then we're going to give it a, a label 
which also equals home. Now the label is the words that show up on the tab itself up here, like home and create and external data. Close that, and we get our closing tab automatically there. Now I'm going to copy in some groups and some buttons into our first tab. All right. So like I said, within a tab you create groups. Within groups you create actual controls. So our first group has an ID of group one, and we're being really simple here. We're going to give it a label of group one. We have a second group down here, group two, which closes there. Within group one, I've put two buttons, okay, one that is going to have the label of main menu and one that will have the label of form two. We can, we have two sizes for buttons, there's large and there's normal. And the super tip is the, the verbiage it displays when you hover your mouse over it, okay. Under group two, I have pretty much the same thing, button three and button four. I'm going to copy in a second tab just so that we can see uh, two tabs on our custom menu. I'm going to call this tab maintenance and on this one I'm going to put two groups as well group M1 and group M2 and within each of those groups I'm going to add three buttons but this time we're going to make them normal size so we can see how those look. All right. Now we're going to create a form to help us edit this useless ribbons table. So I'm going to click form design, pull up the form designer here, I'm going to drag it out make it nice and wide up our property sheet and we're going to bind it to use this ribbons. I'm going to make sure that the default view is single form. I also want to set the navigation buttons to yes and they are. That will help us navigate easily back and forth between one ribbon and another. Then let's do add existing fields. We want to just pull all three of these fields, all three of these columns from the table onto the form. Let's drop them anywhere on there. Now, this is a form that we as developers are going to use. This is not a form that we're going to show our, our users or our, our customers. So we'll make, make sure we have enough room for a nice ribbon, descriptive ribbon name. Then I want to drag out and make this ribbon XML control nice and big. All right. So I'm going to head over to our property sheet. And first I want to make sure that we have a vertical scroll bar. And also I want to set both anchors to both that. So we'll open our form here. So now I want to copy and paste our XML into our form. I'm going to call this one developer. All right. Now I also want to make a second ribbon very similar to the first except I want this one to be for our users. I'm going to call it users. We'll copy it in. We head back up to the top though. But for this one, I want to set the start from scratch equal to true. Right, let's close this. So at this point, Access does not know that we've added these new ribbons. Okay. It detects these upon startup. So we're going here right now to our file or our office button, depending on your version and go to current database, scroll down to ribbon and toolbar options, ribbon name, there's nothing there right now. After we close our database and reopen it, we should see our ribbons there so that we can select them. Options, current database. I'm going to choose the developer ribbon first. Again, we have to close the database to see the results of this. So when you're working with ribbons, you got a lot of opening and closing over database. Close, reopen, and there we go. Here is, here are the two tabs we've added. So we have home, group one and group two, and we have a button. We have our two large buttons here and two large buttons here. Our maintenance tab, we added three small buttons to each group. Now let's head over to, oops, to options one more time. Select our users tab. Close. Reopen. There we have just the home and the maintenance. All right. So there you go. We have a completely non-functional custom ribbon for our database. I know it doesn't do anything quite yet, but there are a lot of topics to cover, and I'm going to cover those in some future videos. So in the next couple of videos, we're going to cover topics like how to show or hide particular built-in access groups and built-in access buttons. 
We'll look, we'll look at the VBA you need to code in order to make things happen when you interact with the ribbon, like clicking a button can open a form. We'll look at the code that allows the ribbon to react to the user interface. For instance, if you have a button that opens a form, what we usually expect to see after you click that button and the form opens, we expect to see that button disable itself. And then when you close the form, we expect that button to re-enable itself. We'll look at how to do that. We'll also look at how to find the names of and use the built-in images that Access has for us to use the ribbon, and also how to put your own custom images on the ribbon. So I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. I will put a link to the XML that we built in this video in the description down below. Also, if you leave comments about other topics you'd like to hear about uh, on the ribbon, let me know in the comments. Thank you and see you next time.